Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to make a video sharing my experience about my transition from Windows to Linux. Because a few days ago I decided to change my operating system and so I'm going to share my experience in this video. And so if you're thinking about switching to Linux or if you're an experienced user looking for a fresh perspective, then this video could be for you, okay? So let's go right in. All right, so first of all, I have to say that I'm not a complete beginner with Linux because I learned computer science and I used Linux many times before. So I installed Linux on my desktop, but it was not the first time that I was using Linux, okay? And as of right now, I've been using Linux for maybe three or four days now. So uh, within these days, to be completely honest, I thought many times uh, switching back to Windows because Linux, I ran into a bunch of issues, obviously, and that's quite painful. Okay, so I'm going to explain later on about these issues. So first of all, I want to talk about the distro that I chose and the distro that I chose is basically Linux Mint Debian Edition 6 and in the beginning I was a little bit hesitant about my distro because there are so many distros and so like which one, which one is the one for me, right? And so for me, I wanted something simple but not too simple, so I was hesitating between Linux Mint, the normal edition, and I was also hesitating with Ubuntu and Debian, so that's kind of what it is. But in my case, I wanted something quite user-friendly and solid that will not give me a bunch of issues so that I can still do my work and also a little bit of gaming, okay? So after a bunch of research, I found Linux Mint Debian Edition, which is kind of an in-between between between all these distros, okay? Because as of right now, I think that Linux Mint Debian ed Edition is pretty user-friendly and it's quite similar to the experience that I had before on Linux Mint. And it, I, it is rock solid because it is based on Debian, but you see it still gives me a little bit of challenge, okay? And I didn't want to go on Ubuntu because from what I've heard and from what I've read, uh, it seems like the company between Ubuntu made a bunch of mistakes or whatever with the snaps and some Amazon stuff. So I wasn't so sure about that. It seems like they're making a bunch of mistakes right now. So I don't know. So I just went with uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition, okay? So after installing uh, Linux Mint, I obviously updated my distro and that went pretty well. And also installed my favorite apps. As of right now, I'm using free and open source productivity apps like GIMP and Inkscape, which I'm able to do all my work, okay? So that's I think that's pretty cool. And as of right now, I'm using Joplin as a note-taking app, and I'm using DaVinci Resolve for my video editing softwares, okay? And DaVinci Resolve is not a free and open source software, but it is my favorite uh, video editing software, and it is available on Linux, so I think that's pretty cool. I also installed uh, Google Chrome and Brave browser as flat packs so that I'm able to go on the web and do different things. And for me, I prefer uh, using browser that are based on Chromium because uh, browser based on Chromium, you can install all the extensions from Google Chrome. And so, so for me, that's pretty important to do my work, okay? I need a browser that is based on Chromium. And so for my gaming needs, what I did is that I installed Steam, and a bunch of other programs as well, a bunch of other things, so that uh, I can play video games. And you can also use Proton with Steam, so I think that's pretty cool, okay? It doesn't support all the games, but I think it supports most games. Now, I wanted to talk about the issues that I went into, okay? And so, for, so the first problem that I run into is basically 
installing the NVIDIA driver, okay? Because by default, I think the graphic driver is some sort of free and open source program or driver or whatever. But in order to use Proton, Team Proton and DaVinci Resolve, you actually need the NVIDIA uh, graphic driver. But you see with the Linux Mint Debian edition, you have to install it manually because it's not in the package manager or whatever. So you kind of have to do it manually, okay? So in my case, I, I'm able to do it because I'm comfortable doing it. I know, I, I mean, I just made a bunch of research, but I think that for most normal people that are going to switch on Linux, this 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 is not something attractive okay i don't think most people want to deal with that thing unless they actually want to deal with it but i don't know that's the kind of thing that make make me think about switching back to windows okay and another problem that i had also is that since i installed the nvidia driver when i had the kernel update i had a kernel update maybe two days ago and because i had the nvidia driver i was not able to update and upgrade my kernel to the latest version and so to upgrade my kernel to the latest version i need to wait uh, nvidia to support that thing to support that version so so i had to do some sort of rollbacks to to, to to wait a little bit so that's something that is quite a little bit annoying as well okay another issue that I went into is uh, right now as of right now I'm using Google Chrome and brave as flat packs okay and most of my work requires a bunch of drag and drop okay with uh, the web browser so for example I'm manipulating a lot of of images and a lot of videos in my work and so the, the one of the bad things that I have with flat packs is that since flat packs are some sort of uh, self container they were not able to read my files when I when I was trying to drag and drop them so what I had to do is change the permissions in order to be able to do that okay so the, those are some sort of command line that you have to to run in the terminal which leads me to my next thing, which is the terminal, okay? And yes, one of the main feature of the Linux experience is to use the terminal, okay? Because it is a very powerful tool. The terminal is a very powerful tool, okay? And I understand the power of it, but you see, using the terminal is a skill in itself, okay? You have to learn how to use the terminal and well, it depends on your needs, but like if you're serious about Linux, you have to learn the terminal, okay? And for me, it's okay, I can deal with it, but I think that most non-technical people don't really want to deal with that, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. And the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, free and open source, okay? Because yes, as a programmer and as a technical person, it can be relevant to look at the code and, and you see, you just go on GitHub and you just look at the code or whatever, and you see it can be pretty cool. And it also shows some sort of transparency in the way that uh, you can trust the person that made the code or whatever the program that you're using. But I think that for most people, they 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 don't care that much about that. Okay, they don't care that much about that. And like most people, I don't think they're going to look at the code. And so for me, I know what GitHub is, and I know that uh, I could look at the code. I could go and look at the code and whatever. But you see, for me personally, I'm not really interested in looking at the code and and. I cannot imagine like non-technical people what they would do, okay? So in the end, what I'm trying to say is that yes, free and open source software is pretty cool, but ultimately it's not everybody is going to look at the code. So in conclusion, I think that Linux, yes, you can do most of your work using free and open source software. And there are also some, some non-free and open source software that you can use like that that you resolve and you'll be able to do your work you'll be able to do a little bit of gaming 
but ultimately it comes with a trade-off, okay? You have to keep in mind that if you're going to use Linux, you'll run into other issues, okay? And so, in a way, you kind of have to fight with your own operating system to make everything work. So that can be a little, a little bit annoying, okay? And so I don't think Linux is for everybody. If you're going to go with Linux, you have to be okay with dealing with technical knowledge. You have to be okay that, hey, you might break a bunch of things and you have to be okay with technical skills and you have to be okay with learning the terminal okay and using the terminal and so those are kind of my thoughts it's, it is definitely not for everybody and as of right now I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with Linux I'm gonna think about it and I might switch to Windows again or maybe I'm going to keep using Linux I don't know yet but that's pretty much it for this video okay so i hope that this video was valuable to you and if this video was was helpful to you you could consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel and if you have any questions or comments you can leave them below because i will answer everything and your thoughts and comments could also be useful to other people as well but for now that's it for this video okay peace <music>